Hello everyone and welcome to another Simple Science video. And in this video in our IGCSE Chemistry Revision Series, we will be looking at pure and impure substances. So in our daily lives, we encounter substances that are not always pure. All right? And I can confidently say that most substances that we encounter are in fact impure. All right? So there, most substances are being adulterated, but for good reason. Or they're in nature, they're there for a good reason. All right, so we're looking at substances like salt water, where it's a mixture of salt and water, steel, where it's a mixture of um, carbon or any other any other elements uh, inside our iron structure, and air, it's a mixture of gases. All right, so a pure substance would be a substance that has nothing else apart from the primary substance mixed in it. So in our control volume, we can see there's a only a homogeneous type of uh, substance in it. So we're looking at distilled water, where there's only H2O molecules and chlorine gas where there's only chlorine molecules and gold. And notice that I'm saying that there are there's a homogeneous the homogeneous spread of um, the hom homogeneous type of elements and compounds. Alright, so it's not just elements. So it can be a compound. So essentially we're looking at water, it's a, it's a homogeneous uh, it's homogeneously just H2O molecules. Alright. So we're looking at the uh, atomic uh, atomic view, we can see that if we were to isolate a certain volume, we can only find one type of substance. So for pure iron, it would just be a metallic structure of iron atoms, iron ions, and it will basically be not, not adulterated with anything. Okay, And for water, it would just be H2O molecules. So as a result, a pure substance cannot be separated by physical means simply because what is there to separate? All right, apart from the primary um, material itself. So um, yeah, we can see that. Uh, we can therefore not separate it because it's, yeah, there's nothing to separate. And if we were to look at the melting and boiling point uh, spread for the uh, pure substance, if we were to do a constant heating graph, we can see that the equilibrium state whereby um, solid and liquid of that substance can exist, or liquid and gas, which is the melting and boiling point, uh, we can see that when we were to extend this towards the y-axis, we can find that there's only one temperature in which this equilibrium state state can exist, and whereby the melting point and boiling points are at a at certain temperatures. All right, so there's basically no range. Now, when we're looking at an impure substance, we can see that there are other substances mixed in it. It can be a mixture or an alloy. So we can look at uh, salt water. We can see that there's a uh, mixture or dissolved um, solution of water and salt. Steel would be an adulterated mixture or an alloy of carbon um, and iron, and maybe other maybe other uh, elements in there. And air, which is a mixture of gas. If we looked at this in atomic scale, we can find that there are many types of molecules within our control volume. There can be such as. For air, it would be a mixture of many different gases like nitrogen, or water molecules, as you can see. Um, and for something like on the right would be stainless steel, where there's where compared to our first uh, pure pure structure of iron, we can see that there's an adulteration of atoms like chromium and carbon, and they're there for good reason. They're there uh, to improve the appearance of our iron structure and to improve its corrosion resistance. And this therefore makes uh, steel, uh, stainless steel, a much more viable option than uh, iron, pure iron, in in very many cases. So, as a result of the adulteration and a mixture of substances, an impure substance can be separated by physical means. We can separate the pure substances inside our impure substances. All right. So um, we do this through processes like filtration, evaporation, distillation, and chromatography, which I will talk about separately, each separately in detail in a different video. So as a result of this, we can see that there is will be a um, range in where range in which uh, the melting point can exist and the range in which the boiling point can exist. So the equilibrium state between solids and liquids, or the melting points, will 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 be uh, existing in a in a different range in a range and there will be a range for the boiling points too. 
So there will be no distinct boiling and melting point, all right? So as a result, we can use melting and boiling point testing as a test for purity. If our substance is simply pure, then we will find out that we will observe that melting will take place at a certain temperature and boiling will take place at a certain temperature. And it would be opposite for it would be not the uh, it would be the melting point and boiling point would be existing in a range for our impure substance. And another important thing to realize is that um, the imp for impure substances, melting take will take place at a lower temperature than the pure substance, and boiling will take place at a higher temperature. This is a very interesting, very interesting discussion which I will talk about in another video. In detail, so to quickly summarize our video, we will see that we will know that a pure substance is simply a substance that has nothing else mixed in it. A, a pure substance cannot be separated by physical means, whereas an impure substance can be separated by physical means, whereby we're trying to separate the pure substances uh, inside our impure substance. And the melting point and boiling point testing will be a test for purity, because um, for an impure substance, melting point and boiling points have ranges, and for an impure substance, recognize that the melting point is higher and the boiling point is lower. All right, so thank you very much for watching my video. I wish you all good luck in your revision, whether it be mock or finals. And good luck and do well. <laughs> do well. Make me proud. Thank you very much.